Hi folks, here we go again. Uh, we've been talking about limits uh, in this chapter. We, we started talking about um, limits from a graphical and numerical point of view in section 2.2 and then we, we looked at algebraic methods and tricks to compute limits. Uh, today we're going to work towards talking about the precise definition of a limit, the rigorous definition, um, also called the formal definition of a limit. But we need to, I, need to, I want to go over some uh, algebra stuff first. Uh, so this first, I'm going to break it into two parts. This first part is going to be a review of, of solving absolute value inequalities, and I'll, I think what we'll do is get to the definition of a limit, the formal definition, and then the second part we'll run we'll through some examples. Okay, but uh, this is no. Um, uh, you still have to go to class. You got to be there. There's, there's a lot of things we're covering in class that I'm not going to cover. You got to do the homework too, right? We've talked about that. All right. Anyway, here we go. Absolute value equation. Um, what does this say in words? Well, one way to say the absolute value of x is 5, uh, if you were to, to reword this, couldn't you say the, uh, the distance between um, uh, let's see, x and 0 is 5 units. That's just one way to think of it. So if you draw this on the number line, if this is 0, this is 5, this is negative 5, where could x be? It could be here, or it could be there. So uh, the solution is x equals 5, or x equals negative 5. And in general, the rule, the basic rule says, if you have the absolute value of anything equaling a number, uh, a has to be greater than or equal to 0, then what's inside the absolute values either equals a or negative a, plus or minus a. That's, that's the basic rule. So when you solve this equation, uh, what's inside the absolute values uh, has to equal 7 or 3x minus 5 equals negative 7. And then you solve each of these separately. So if you add 5 to both sides, you get 3x equals 12, x equals 4. Over here, you get 3x equals negative 2, so x equals negative 2 thirds. Okay, does that ring, ring a bell? So now when you talk about absolute value inequalities, what does this say? The absolute value of x is less than 5. Isn't that tell you that the, absolute, the distance, the distance between x and 0 is less than 5. So where could x be? If this is 0, this is 5, and this is negative 5, couldn't x be anywhere in between? So that, that's why the um, solution to this absolute value of inequality is x is uh, negative 5 is less than x, which is less than 5. That's the solution. As a general rule, the rule we're going to follow here says if you have the absolute value of anything less than a, a has to be, um, uh, let's see, what, greater than or equal to zero? Uh, um, then what's inside the absolute values would be less than negative, well, negative a is less than star, which is less than a. That's the basic rule we're talking about. Okay, so if you wanted to solve this inequality, the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is less than 7, what's inside these absolute values, 3x minus 5, must be greater than negative 7 and less than 7. And then you can solve it by adding 12 to both sides. So this, be, uh, I'm sorry, adding 5 to all three things. So negative 2 is less than 3x is less than 12. Dividing by 3, negative 2 thirds is less than x is less than 4. A couple more, and then we'll get to the precise definition of a limit. All right, so if you encounter something like this, we're solving for x. How would you solve this absolute value inequality? What's inside the absolute value bars must be between, oh, by the way, delta is what this is. Think of it as an unknown number. It'll be greater than negative delta, and it's less than delta. So how would you solve for x? x is between a minus delta and a plus delta. I just added a to, to all three things. Okay. Uh, 
similarly, if you have something like this, again, now this is on, this is called epsilon. Think of it again like delta. Think of it as just an unknown constant, okay? So if you were to solve this, you can get rid of the absolute value. What's inside is between negative epsilon and epsilon. So if you, then we're solving for f of x. If you add l to everything, l minus epsilon is less than f of x is less than l plus epsilon. There you go. All right, I think we're ready. So when you, we're going to define what it means to say the limit is x goes to a of f of x equals l. Remember, the old definition said we have to make f of x arbitrarily close to L by picking X sufficiently close to A. My question is, okay, how close to L uh, do you have to make it? And the answer is, of course, arbitrarily close. What does that mean? Well, to be more precise, couldn't I pick some error bound here? And I say, okay, you know, I want all the F of X's this, this close to L. Let's call that error bound epsilon would be this radius. So this would be L plus epsilon and this L minus epsilon. And what I want you to be able to do is be able to find a corresponding interval around A so that so that if X is inside that interval, all the F of X's are in this in, are, are in this band. That's, that's the way we nail it down. And the way to think of it is, if you were to extend this out, horizontal lines, you have to, and you can see, kind of look where, where these cross, uh, where, where, where the line crosses the graph. Here, and here, I have to be able to find an interval around A. Well, uh, that would work, but I want to find a symmetric interval around A. So, whichever is the smaller of the two, it doesn't always, they're not always going to be the same. Doesn't it look like you should be able to find an interval around A? Let, let's call that interval have radius delta. So, this would be A minus delta. This would be A plus delta. I chose the smaller of the two. Isn't it true then, folks? If X is anywhere inside of this interval, the F of X will be in that band. So what does that mean? It means um, saying that a little differently for any epsilon, in other words for any uh, error bound on the y-axis, there is a delta which would be a corresponding interval that depends on epsilon around the x-axis so that what? If x is inside of that interval. So wouldn't it be x has to, be, has to be greater than a minus delta and less than a plus delta? Then what? Then f of x has to be has to be in this band. So you'd say then um, l minus epsilon is less than f of x is less than a l plus epsilon. Now it turns out from what we just did you can actually write this as an inequality. You can write each of these as absolute value any inequalities. We just did that. If you subtract uh, a from all three things, you get negative delta less than x minus a less than delta, and then you can write this um, as an absolute value, right? It would be, become absolute value x minus a less than delta. This one, you could go, okay, you would um, subtract l from everything, negative epsilon less than f of x minus l, less than epsilon. We can, we can write this as an absolute value also. Uh, you'd write it as absolute value f of x minus l less than epsilon. There it is. Now, there's one small, that, that's the definition. That's exactly what it is. There's one small thing added to the definition. You see this, uh, this absolute value is greater than zero. The reason why they, they throw that in there is because what happens when it equals zero? Doesn't x equals a? But remember, with the definition of limit, we don't care what happens when x equals a. So that, that's why they add this to it. It's kind of a minor issue. But that's it. Now, so what I want you to be able to do on a quiz or test is you should be able to state this definition like this, and you should be able to draw this picture that demonstrates the definition. And one last thing I want to mention, there's two other, two other defi definitions that we're going to cover in class in this section too. We're going to talk about the formal definition for the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals infinity. I wonder what the picture would look like for that. And also the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals negative infinity. These are also in section 2.4. Alright, so on the next one we're going to look at some examples that demonstrate this uh, formal definition. See you then.